Hi, I'm Carol O'Mara, horticulture entomologist with Colorado State University Extension in Boulder County. As we get ready to plant our spring gardens, the one thing almost every gardener starts obsessing about is our dirt. Well, it's not really dirt per se. A lot of gardeners get kind of fussy about having you call it soil because what we have in the garden and what we plant into is actually an entire living system. And the one thing that we really have to be sure that we're paying attention to is the texture of our soil. Texture refers to the combination of sand, silt, and clay particles that make up the whole. And as they bump up against one another and a little bit of organic matter also, they form air space or pore space that the roots can grow into. It holds water and oxygen to help keep those roots healthy. Well, outside of a soil test, if you want a quick and easy and fun way to check out what your texture is like, let's go ahead and try having you do a soil jar test. That's a test of texture by measurement. What you need is pretty basic. You need a glass jar that you can see through that carries about a quart of fluid, a tight fitting lid, soil from your garden, and just a touch of dishwashing detergent, the type that does not foam. What this is going to do is break up the surface tension on the soil as we're putting it into the jar with a little bit of water so we can shake it up. This is a fun activity to do with the kids. Go ahead and get your soil and um, put it on a, a little paper uh, bag or a box like this in order to dry out. And it's important to break up the clods before you start doing this. So everybody get their hands in there and let's get a little dirty today. We just break up these uh, clods, get it nice and soft textured. You can spread it out to dry just a little bit if you want. Before we do this, so put it in a non-sunny location for about a day or so. And once we've got it all broken up and nice and smooth, just like this. Take the rocks out of there. Then we're going to take our jar and start filling it about one-third with soil. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit of leaves or other organic matter in there, they'll float to the top. And once you have approximately a third of a jar of soil, take about a teaspoon of dishwashing detergent. So this is where your inner cook comes out. Put that in. And then fill the rest of the jar with water. You don't want to fill it quite to the top, but you do want plenty to get up to the neck of the jar. Put that lid on nice and tight. And then you're going to shake this up and keep shaking for about 10 to 15 minutes. This is where the kids come in because everybody likes passing the jar around and seeing how hinky they can get with the shaking of the jar. So you just keep shaking it and shaking it and shaking it. This will break up all the particles and start separating them, especially with that detergent in there to break up the soil surface tension. And through the miracle of digital technology, we're going to switch to a jar that's already been shaken for about 10 to 15 minutes and take a look at what happens when it settles out. Once you've finished shaking your jar, set it down in a location where it can stay for several days undisturbed. What's going to start happening is the particles of the soil are going to start settling down in different layers based on the size of the particles themselves. Because sand is the largest of our particles, it's going to be settling down to the bottom of the jar first, right in here. And after approximately one minute, what you do is you take a Sharpie marker and you mark on the jar the level of the sand that's in it. So we're just going to make a mark right here at the top edge of our sand layer. The next particles that are going to filter down over the next two hours or so is going to be silt that's slightly larger. It's going to be a darker layer, but as you can see, not quite as coarse as the sand that's settled in here. So after about two hours, you come back with your marker and mark the level of the silt layer. 
Then you walk away for about a day or two to let the remainder of the clay particles settle out. And it, this can take a little bit of time. It depends on how vigorously you shook it up, but sometimes it'll take just about a day or so, or maybe a day and a half for all those clay particles to settle in. But once it does, you can see here that lightest layer that we have right here. We just mark it. And then we're ready to figure out the percentage of our texture on this. The items that you need in order to measure the, the percentages of your soil texture are few. You need a calculator, a pen, a ruler, and a little bit of a worksheet here so you can calculate your percentages. Take your ruler and measure the, the thicknesses of each layer. So what we have here is about 1.8 inches of sand. We have 6 eighths of an inch of silt, and then we have 3 eighths of clay. Once we've written those things down onto our worksheet, go ahead and take the total of the entire sample itself that is settled down, and for us it's two and a quarter inches. Then we start doing some simple division, which for me, and I'm math challenged, I'm going to use a calculator. Since we're working with uh, small segments like an eighth of an inch, we'll divide the whole thing by eighths, and that gives us 18 units for the entire depth of the, the sample, because two and a quarter inches is 18 eighths. Then what we want to do is simply divide the depth of each segment by the total of the entire sample. So our first one, the sand, was 1.8, an inch and an eighth, so 9, divided by 18, and that gives us 50% of this sample is sand. The next segment that we had was 6 eighths of an inch, so 6 divided by 18 for the silt gives us 33% of the sample is silt, and then the final segment was 3 eighths divided by 18, and that'll give us um, about 16%. With this, we know the different percentages of our texture. So it's more of a sandy soil that we have with this, being 50% sand. And the clay is less than 20%, so it is not a heavily clayey type of sample. It's pretty good for a vegetable garden. But if we want to be sure, we take these numbers and refer to the soil texture triangle that you can find online and start comparing the percentages that you have to see exactly what type of a soil you're dealing with. We have 50%, 16, and 33. So we drive it down, we drive it over, and we drive it up. And this is what our soil is right here. Kind of a heavy sandy clay loam. Almost always if you're going to be using any type of a soil amendment it's going to be requiring organic material. Even if your soil is low in sand don't add any sand to your soil. Because we're so heavy with clay if you start adding in sand, sand and clay mixed with organic material, water and sunlight starts making your soil more like adobe brick. So we don't add sand here in Colorado, but you can add organic matter. But this is one simple way of figuring out your soil texture so you have a baseline of knowing if you need to start amending it with organic material or not. I'm Carol O'Mara and happy gardening.